it's been a while. So I just filmed something for a collab a minute ago and I was thinking that I was gonna give myself a little break and work on my integrative theory paper for a bit before coming back to filming. But you know what? I'm in the mood to film right now and to talk about books because I haven't done that very much lately. Hi everyone, my name is Shelby and you're watching Read and Find Out. It has been a little bit since I've filmed so this feels a little bizarre, but I felt like doing it. I have a day off, I'm getting stuff done, so here we are. Also, I was thinking about trying to go for like a wavy hair sort of look. Typically my hair is pretty straight and I just like straighten it out a little bit to make it not flip out at the bottom. But I slept on my hair wet and then I put some sort of curly stuff in it. I don't know if it actually looks wavy or if it looks disheveled, but we're working with it. So enough rambling, the point of the video. Today I have my top 18 backlist reads. It's kind of 18, I'll explain that in a second, of 2018. So my standout reads of 2018 that were not 2018 releases. I have my top 10 2018 releases already published or whatever. These aren't ranked or anything. And I'm saying it's kind of 18 because some of them I'm saying a series. So I'm putting the whole series of like, I loved the entire thing and would put the whole thing on my list for standout, but I'm only counting it as one if I do that. However, if I didn't love the whole thing enough to put it on my standout list, then I can only put one installment. Also, this is like if I read the entirety of the series or the entirety of the series that was published in 2018. You'll see what I mean in a second. First up is Descender Volume 1. Now I read the entirety of the Descender series and I really loved about half of it and enjoyed the other half, but because I didn't love the entire thing enough to include it on this list, it's just Descender Volume 1 which was my favorite volume of the whole series. And I would recommend this one because I did not realize how emotionally impacted I could be by a robot boy. Then we have Ship of Destiny, the final book in the Live Ship Traders trilogy. You're probably thinking, why don't you have the whole Live Ship Traders trilogy on there? That's because I read the first two books near the end of 2017. This is the only one that I actually read in 2018. It's the conclusion of a trilogy, so I can't really say much about what this is about and I recommend reading this trilogy after the Farseer trilogy in the Realm of the Elderlings. But I would just say in general that you should read the Live Ship Traders trilogy for characterization and societal change. Then we have the fifth season, which is the first book in the Broken Earth trilogy. No, I'm not including the entire trilogy on this, even though I read the whole trilogy in 2018. If I had liked The Stone Sky as much as the first two than I would have, but I just didn't feel right about putting The Stone Sky on this list because I liked it, but I didn't love it on the same level. And I preferred the fifth season to The Obelisk Gate, even though I loved The Obelisk Gate. I would recommend reading the Broken Earth trilogy, but specifically the fifth season, for its examination of systemic oppression and the interesting point of view shifts and the interesting style, which I know is something that people often don't like so much about this series, but I thought it was fascinating because I never read anything that's like told in this kind of second person. And it's not all in second person, it alternates. Then we have The New Jim Crow, which is the only nonfiction that I have on this list. Not to say that I didn't read nonfiction, I read a fair amount of nonfiction in 2018. This was just the best. Read this if you want the stats for mass incarceration and if you want to know the background and the history and where we're at now and see it all come together, that is what this is good for. It's insightful, it reads like a textbook, so if you can't read something and make sense of it, if it's in that kind of jargon, you probably won't like it as much, but if you can deal with that, read it. Then we have Binti Home by Nadia Korafor. I don't have a copy of this one. I own the first Binti book, but not the second and third. My experience with the Binti trilogy was very similar to my experience with the Broken Earth trilogy in that I really did love the first two installments and I liked the third one, but I was like not quite up to that love level. I read the entire Binti trilogy in 2018 and I really did enjoy it, but I'm putting Binti home on this list for a specific reason and that is because it is a science fiction book that talks specifically about trauma that is experienced and you see someone who sees a counselor for it. Shocking! In science fiction and fantasy, people experience trauma all the time, and particularly in science fiction books where there should be therapists probably because it's more real world kind of setting. 
though I also recommend Benti Home for examining coming back to your home kind of culture or the culture that you came from after you have grown as a person. And it's not to say that the culture you came from is not good or valid, but when you've changed that kind of uncomfortableness, it was really interesting to examine. And then we have my first case of an entire series being included on this list, and that's the Tawny Man trilogy. This is the third trilogy in Robin Hobb's Realm of the Elderlings. It continues on with Fitz and the Fool's story, Fitz and the Fool being in the Farseer trilogy, the first trilogy. So obviously I can't say anything about this, but I would recommend continuing on if you're in the Realm of the Elderlings to see the growing and changing relationship of characters in this series, because it is phenomenal and heartbreaking in many, many ways. Then we have My Favorite Thing is Monsters Volume 1 by Emil Ferris, which I don't have, but it is one of the chunkiest graphic novels that I've ever read. And I would recommend this one for the interesting art style. It's kind of told in journal entries, but it's told from the perspective of Karen, who is conceptualizing herself in her diary as a monster. Like she draws herself as a monster because that is how she makes sense of the world and that's part of her experience and worldview and her values and it's really cool. Then we have Every Harder Doorway by Sean and McGuire, the first book in the Wayward Children series. I'm saying that it's a series in its like publication order even though some of them are backstories and then some of them are continuations after the first book which is Every Harder Doorway. And I would recommend this one because of the boarding school setting where you have magical kids or kids who have gone to magical worlds and they come back to this world that doesn't fit with them anymore. It doesn't feel congruent and examining what that's like for them, especially when they have these experiences that people don't believe them about. I just really liked it. And also seeing an explicitly asexual protagonist. Then we have Brit Marie Was Here. I haven't mentioned that some of these books are on my Shelby and Bookshelf, so books that I resonate with. This was one of them though. I would recommend this because you are seeing an elderly person, or an older person at the very least, who is undergoing change, and to see that people are layered and we aren't just how we appear on the surface. There's always more going on. And because the humor actually really worked in this one for me. Humor often doesn't work for me in books, but this one really did. Then we have The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, which I would recommend for the romantic aspects of it. I am just a sucker for people growing up together and then falling in love. Not to mention that Miller's prose is beautiful. So good. Then we have A Closed and Common Orbit by Becky Chambers. Now, The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet would ordinarily be on this list, however, the third book in that trilogy came out in 2018. So I couldn't say that I was including the trilogy as a whole, so I just didn't feel good about having it and saying that I was including the trilogy to date, because I couldn't say that. So I picked between the two, and I prefer to close in Common Orbit. And I would recommend this one for its examination of artificial intelligence and robots because that is apparently something that I'm really into. And also because I liked the shifting perspectives where we have the present timeline of one character and the past timeline of another character, a character who's heavily involved in the present timeline, but we don't see her perspective then, we see it in the past. Really cool, I liked that as a narrative choice. Then there's another series to date, which was the Winter Night Trilogy. I know that in 2019, The Winter of the Witch, which I have on my to-read shelf, did come out. However, in 2018, I read the first two installments of the trilogy. And I would recommend this one for the atmosphere and the Russian setting that has this magic to it. And for the protagonist, Vasya, because I love her. Even though she started to frustrate me in ways in The Girl in the Tower, I still got it. Like, it was frustrating in believable ways. It wasn't that... I was frustrated because I thought that everything she did didn't make sense. Maybe it didn't in a rational way, but there were understandable motivations. Then we have The 100 Nights of Hero by Isabel Greenberg. This is another one I read from the library. It's a graphic novel. It's kind of like mythology-based fantasy, but it's the mythology of another world. And it has these themes of storytelling where the characters are telling a story, but the fact that they're telling a story is like a key part of the story and then the importance of narratives is discussed i i just really dug that it's also super quirky if you're into that kind of quirky art style with quirky storytelling and kind of serious humor 
that makes sense, because this is another one where the humor really worked for me, I would say pick up the 100 Nights of Hero. Then there's the Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill. I talked about Aquacorn Cove by Katie O'Neill in my 2018 releases video. This is just visually stunning and it contains so many different aspects of diversity in a very easily digestible middle grade format. I just think it's beautiful. So please pick this up. Also, it's so short. You could read it so easily. Just do it. Then we have another series in its entirety and that's My Brother's Husband. Oh my god. These were both five star reads for me. Seeing a character's internal like dialogue as they are coming to grips with the biases that they've had that they might not have been so aware of. They might have thought that they were accepting but actually were not, which I think could be a common experience for a lot of people. And seeing them wrestle that and then come to grips with it and then move on and do better. Really good and so sweet. I cried a lot in both of these volumes actually. Then there is Blood of Dragons, the fourth book in the Rainwild Chronicles Quartet by Robin Hobb. The Rainwild Chronicles is the fourth series in Robin Hobb's Realm of the Elderling series, so obviously I can't say too much about this. Just know that um, there's kind of a feminist uprising in a society that's not even like a main part of the series. I just feel like that's the least spoilery thing I could say about why I liked it, other than that it ties in a lot of Robin Hobb related things that I was previously not as aware of. I, it just made sense of a lot of plot kind of stuff. But the feminist uprising in this secondary society that's not a super big part of the plot, but it's there. I liked it. Then there's The Handmaid's Tale, which I actually read with a friend in real life. Thankfully, because this would be a hard thing to get through on my own. I think one of the biggest standout aspects of this book for me was seeing how it would be so destructive to take away these small things that are actually very meaningful, like the ability to have a bank account. And then combining that with Atwood's style, because I actually very much so enjoyed the style of the book. And I know the ending is controversial, but I actually found it to be very fitting and I wasn't bothered by it. I mean, I was bothered in that I wanted to know things, but... And then the epilogue. The epilogue was also, yeah, another reason to read this book. And then finally, I think this was my last read of 2018, but it made the list. That was The Willful Princess and the Piebald Prince by Robin Hobb. It's like kind of a prequel for The Realm of the Elderlings. It doesn't follow any of our characters in The Realm of the Elderlings that we read as in, like a novel format, but it gives us background on the wit, like as a magic, and then the piebalds who are a group in the realm of the elderlings particularly in the tawny man trilogy and this was sad and disheartening in a lot of ways but also it just made sense of a lot of stuff that happens in the realm of the elderlings when you look at like the wit as a magic and the prejudice that these people experience you get to see kind of the origins of it that was a lot of books but those were my favorites of 2018 that were backlist reads, so ones that weren't 2018 releases. Comment down below and let me know if you have read any of these and what you thought of them. Are any of these your favorite books? Or are any of them books that you actually hate? That's fine too. And in addition to that, what were some of your favorite 2018 reads? Because I'm still working my way through videos because I'm months behind and my watch later list is huge. Not because I don't love you guys and not because I don't want to like support you, but I'm just busy all the time. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I hope you have a good day and until next time, bye.